Seat and at your feet. Yes, and so we cry like Samuel, would you speak, Lord, a fresh word into our spirit? Yes, As we look into chapter 3 of the book of Ephesians, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God, we continue to see praise the Lord, amen, praise God, praise God. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. For this reason, when you read words like this, you got to stop right there and ask, what is he talking about? Because you can't continue without you know what he's talking about. So you gotta look back. You gotta go back to see what Paul is talking about. So he's pointing at something that he referred to before he move on into chapter three. For this reason, says Paul, the prisoner of Christ. Very important. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ. Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. The mystery. What's the mystery that the apostle was talking about? The mystery was the Jews and the Gentiles now have freedom to go before the same God and we all can partake of the covenants. The blessings that come from the covenants. So Paul was not only saying that he was in prison in Rome because of the gospel, although he was incarcerated for the gospel, but he said he was the prisoner of Christ Jesus. Observe, it's not like when you read chapter 4. He's a prisoner for, he's saying of, prisoner of Christ Jesus. Which clearly states that his entire life now belongs to the Lord. In other words, Paul was saying, I'm sold out for him. Everything about me is all for him. In this, in his letter, to the Galatians, he quotes, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer, and I no longer live. See, we, we must place the emphasis where it goes. He said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. He was saying, as far as he's concerned, I am dead. Mm -hmm. See, he's actually saying, as far as, well, I'm going to use my name because it's Roland and you are speaking. I, Roland, as long as I'm concerned, I no longer live for myself. The reason why I'm living is not for Christ. So he's saying, as far as me, me, I'm concerned. I'm, I, 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 don't, I, I don't care about me. I care about him. Mm -hmm. So my life, my whole life belongs to him. It's when someone surrender their from life to Christ. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing, I'm, I'm, I'm delayed here because I want you guys to see how important it is when you say Jesus Christ is your Lord. I heard a song sometime ago that says, 99 and a half will do. When you say Jesus is your Lord, he expects to be Lord of all. Amen. Not just Lord of our spiritual life, but is Lord over our entire life. Mm -hmm. Means our physical life, our financial life, our relational life. He affects every part of our being. That's what Paul is saying. He said, because I am crucified with Christ, I no longer live. I'm not living for myself anymore. I'm not living for the one of whom I belong. He said, but Christ lives inside of me. And the life I now live in the, you see, in the one version says in the flesh. But he said, the life I now, long, I now live in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. 1B. He became a prisoner of the gospel for the Gentiles. So when the Lord saved Saul, which was 
his Hebrew name, before he was converted to his Gentile name, Paul, he was sold out for what he believed. He, he believed that he was doing God's will by persecuting the Christians mm -hmm. until he came in contact with God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he came in contact with the Lord, he surrendered his entire life to him. And therefore he's saying, I am now a prisoner of Christ. That means that what Christ says to me, I do. His whole life belongs to him. Um, God spoke to Ananias concerning Paul's purpose in this world. The Lord said to Ananias, go, according to Acts chapter 9, he says, go, this man is my, underline those words please, this man is my chosen instrument. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings. And to the people of Israel, I will show him how much he must. Oh, man. I will show him how much he must. There is this, there is this word right here that none of us likes. I will show you how much he must suffer for him. You know, last Sunday, I shared with you guys that the Lord has a way that he wants to see if we really love him as we claim. May I say to you, God doesn't really believe our words anymore. <laughs> because he says, people worship me with their lips, but their hearts constantly go astray. So God says, in order for me to know if you love me, I will put you in a test. I, I, just, I just want to see if you really Love me the way you claim. So let me drop you in some fire. And when he puts us in there, we want to see how we respond. Let me see if you really can while I'm speaking there. Can you can you find a first Peter chapter one verse six and seven, please? Somebody just find first Peter chapter one verses six and seven. Show you guys something. Anybody got it? Somebody got it. Yep. So somebody got it by the Pastor Terrence's microphone. Yeah. Yeah. I have it. <coughs> brother, brother, brother Jeff got it. Yeah. First Peter chapter 1. Yes, yes, yes. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than that of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. That's good, King Jimmy. Excellent word. Anybody have NIV? Let's let's say. Oh, sister, sorry, yeah, yeah. Sister, Ben, right there. Let's say it in the NIV. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, song in the NIV. Right. In this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. You know, Sister Isabel, did you say a little while? Mm -hmm. While they are in that little while, it looks like a long time. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's a never-ending story, right? Because we are in the circumstances. We are right there in the test. We have to suffer for a little while, right? Mm -hmm. Let's continue, please. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine. Oh, you see, right there, thank you. That's it. So these trials have come so that our faith may prove genuine. So, which means that God doesn't take our word anymore. I love you, Lord. And I lay my voice to worship the Lord is saying, mm -hmm. Thank you. When you leave here, let me see how much you love me. Drop you in the pond. Let's move on. How much, he says, I will show him how much he has to suffer for my name's sake. 
And Paul had to bring the Gentile, sorry, Paul had to bring to the Gentile nation this gospel about a Jesus who the Gentiles do not know. The Gentiles worship idols and various gods. And if you never visited Greece or any of those countries, I encourage you, if you take the opportunity, go over there even today and you'll see how much people, religious folks, worship idols. The, the idol worship is as prevalent today as it was then. Right, man? When I was in Greece, my wife and me, as we took a walk in Greece, we, we saw in, in, in the yards, in certain places, there was these little huts that they built in the yards. In almost every yard, there were these buildings, built like little shed like this. And in front of that was a cross. Every single yard had one of these. A door and a cross. And I remember asking the guy, why is it that they have all these little huts, all these little, I don't know what you call it, temple in the yards? And he said to us, every one of these yards, every one of these families, they hire their own priests. So, that means that if the Jones live here, in this land, and the Jones were the priests, they hire priest Jones, or they hire priest Mary. Can you come and pray for me? Priest comes in, pray for him, they pay him his money, and the priest leave. That's how they function. And, 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 and they worship their gods like that. And there are many gods that they worship. And I told you guys that while I was in Alabama, I went to visit um, a temple, a Hindu temple. First time I've been in a Hindu temple where they worship many gods. And I went to the temple. First they told me, you got to take your shoes off in front. So my shoes off at the front door. And you walk inside, there was a lady, a lady at the, at the front. And she has something in her hand with some water or something that she had in her bowl. As you walk in, she's dipping her finger and put your head. When she came to my head, I said, not my head. <laughs> no, not my head. I don't know what's in that bowl. And I don't know where your finger was. You put your finger on my head. No, 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 no. So, of course, we went inside. And when I went inside, on the stage, they had all kinds of heads. Just heads. Look like they made these heads. Designed like scarves. And they got them spread all around the front. Uh, why? Why all these heads? I asked the guy. And he says, oh, these heads represent the gods that we worship. The god of the sun. The god of the wet, the rain. The god of fertility. The god of pregnancy. The god of wife. The god of husband. The god of... I mean, just... So I said, eh? So how would I know which god to pray for if I need money? It's confusing. But they think that those gods, when they pray to them, that they hear them. They believe it. And if you go in there and try to disturb that, you could be in some trouble. Mm -hmm. Let's go now, friends. Paul says, Paul had to go to the Gentiles. So he's coming to the Gentiles with a different kind of God. He's presenting a God that's alive, not a God that's dead. He also testified later there in Acts chapter 22. When I returned to Jerusalem, says Paul, I was praying at the temple. I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he says, leave Jerusalem immediately because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of your martyr seal was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. So the Jews wouldn't accept him because the Jews, Saul, of course, was like their murderer. He was like the person who was persecuting the Christians. But when he gets saved, now, the Lord wanted him to come and take the same gospel. He was persecuting him to take it. Not so much to the Jews, but to the Gentile nation. Because he had Peter as the apostle to the Jews. Continue, please. He had informed them of being called to be the minister of the gospel. He was called. He wasn't someone that somebody says, I'm going to make you a pastor. He was called by God. But still there was a possibility that they had not received the letter con containing the information. And he goes, therefore, into another statement on the subject that they might fully comprehend it. 
Look at verse 2. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. By the administration of the grace of God, we may understand either by the apostolic office and the gifts granted to the apostle for the purpose of preaching the gospel among the Gentiles or the knowledge which God gave him of the gracious and divine plan which he had formed for the conversion of the Gentiles. Keep in mind that it's only when Paul brought this to light that people could have understood it. Because the Jews and the Gentiles were always separated. They were never together. Jews and Gentiles. There was great hostility between these two groups. Now, they were never together. As a matter of fact, you could never find the Jews and the Gentiles working together. Never, never. There's always hostility between these two groups. And somehow, God used the Apostle Paul to share with people that that mystery that was held locked up for ages is now being revealed through the Apostle Paul. Now, it's kind of tough for these theologians to believe Paul because they say, who do you think you are? We've been to school, we have all these degrees, and Paul said, yeah, but I got some information that you guys don't got. Because the information I got is from divine revelation that God has given to me. Because God is seeking something bigger than your books. God is trying to bring these two together as one. He's trying to bridge the gap between the Jews and the Gentiles. And I said to you before, those of you who are not here, that God's plan was that he would bless the earth through the Jews. Always wanted to bless. God always wanted to bless the earth. You know that. I'm talking to you guys, and I said to someone just recently, you know, even though God is sovereign, please hear me, even though God is omnipotent, he's the almighty God, and he's sovereign, and he's the master, and he owns everything, he owns the billions of planets, and he included this earth, and he owns everything. But let me say this to you, that on this earth, this earth that we are living on, if God has to do something on this earth, he has to find somebody who give him permission to do something on this earth. That's mm -hmm. here. Yes, correct. Because this earth is ruled by the God of this world. Mm -hmm. Let me say this to you. The systems of this world is not operated, and they are not operated by God. Mm -hmm. Our government, yes, sorry to let you know this, but our nice president, as you guys love so much and all the wonderful things that goes on in America, let me let you know that the systems of this world are not the systems that function in this kingdom. You mm -hmm. cannot. You cannot. No wonder the Bible says, come out from, come out, come out from among them. The Lord is saying, come out from among them because in this new, this new kingdom, you're operating on a new system, a new management. You know, as the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10. For though we live in this world, we don't war, wage war as this world. As a matter of fact, I want you guys to see please that, that, that although we are in this world, we are not of this world. We are foreigners in this world. As a matter of fact, we are like strangers in this world, Sister Charlotte. We live in this world. But, and we, we need money to function this world. But really, oh, we cannot operate, we cannot be influenced by this world. You know, Miles Monroe did a wonderful job in his book speaking about the kingdom of this world. And I have all his books. And, and Miles Monroe did a fabulous job at speaking about the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God. And the kingdoms of this world is run by the God of this world, the systems of this world. No one the scripture says, do not love the world than the things that are in this world. Yes, we need money, we need house, we need cars, we need all those things. But he's saying, do not allow those things to replace me. I am your Lord. So the Lord is saying to Paul, through Paul, I raise your Paul to let the world know I am doing a new thing. The way that the Jews were, I want to bless the earth through the Jews, but the Jews, yeah, I messed up too. 
So therefore, God sent Jesus into this world. God sent Jesus into this world to bridge this gap between the Jews and Gentiles and call out a bunch of folks. And he called them the church. And he says, through the church, I bless the earth. Through the church, I bless the earth. The church. I'm pulling these two groups together and I pull some folks up from them. And then through you, I will bless the church. I bless the world. Now, the problem is, the problem right here is that church turn around and begin to follow the world. And Paul's message was that we should never follow the world. Be imitators of God. Following Christ. So let's continue on this verse. On the contrary, Galatians chapter 2 says, they recognize that I have been entrusted. I have, you see, you know, as you listen, as you listen to the words of the Apostle Paul, it sounds a little arrogant, right? I mean, you're listening to him speaking here, it sounds a little arrogant. He said, and on the contrary, they recognize that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the uncircumcised. Just as Peter had been to the circumcised, these Jews. For God who was at work in Peter as an apostle to the circumcised was also at work in me as an apostle to the Gentiles or the uncircumcised. His, his, his testimony before King Agrippa also spoke. He says about noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Verse 15, then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. The Lord replied, Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you and appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will of me. I will rescue you. And here is the assignment that the Lord gave to Paul. Not to Saul, but to Paul. I will rescue you from among your own people and from the Gentiles. Keep in mind, your own people is speaking about the Jews. Because Paul, remember Saul at the time, as a matter of fact, he's a Jew. He's a Jew. He said, I will rescue you from your own people. That's the Jewish people. And from the Gentiles. We mean the Gentiles are killing too. <laughs> he was wanted in both groups. And I am sending you to them. So God took him out from among them. Cleaned him up. Put his spirit in him. And took him and placed him back among them. And now, that's... Sunday I spoke about Jesus wanted to go back to Judea, the same place where they tried to stone him for opening the eyes of the blind. You remember? They opened the eyes of the blind. Try to stone him. The disciple says, Are you going back to Judea? Remember they tried to kill you over there? And Jesus Christ says, I got to go. I got 12 hours in the day. I got to work by this day. I'm sending you to them to open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light. Come on, from the power of Satan to God. So they may receive forgiveness for their sins. Ignorance. That's in that. And I place among those who are standing for my feet in you. Verse 3 of chapter 3. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation. As I have already written briefly, says Paul. He shared with them that what he was doing was not his own opinion. As some teachings, he or all some teachings, he may have received from some school of theology. But this revelation came from the one who called him, even as he mentioned there in chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. And chapter 3, verse, uh, uh, verses 4 through 6. In reading this says, the apostle, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. 
in reading this then, you will be able to understand that my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, and is now being made and is now being revealed by the Spirit of God, holy by the Spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Wow. So the promise that God gave to the Jews Jay Jews you are my chosen people you are my special people through you all the nations of the world will be blessed you guys are it you represent my kingdom Paul is saying no that ain't no matter so God is opening the door to anybody. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants it can get it. Not just the Jews. He's saying anybody who wants it can get it. He's saying here the apostle is attempting to bring to them an understanding into the mystery. This mystery of the Jews and Gentiles come together. Because it never been in the history. They were separated. All the laws that Moses gave to them, when, they, when the Lord brought them out from the land of Egypt, all those laws, the Mosaic laws, all those laws was, that was strictly for the Jews. I know that somebody met me on the plane when I'm traveling and I sat next to somebody and says, um, so I see you reading the Bible. And what church you go to? I told him the church I was going to and he said, huh? do you keep the Sabbath? I looked at him and he says, well, yes, I keep the Sabbath. Hey, what day you keep the Sabbath? I said, any day. <laughs> so, he said, I well, know the Sabbath is on Saturday. I said, who says? So I asked him, and, and, and in my conversation, I said, are you a Jew? Because the word Sabbath, anybody knows what the word Sabbath means? Rest. That's what it means. Rest. And if you're working seven days a week, you need to hit down and repent. You need to take a day and rest. Everybody. Listen, I don't play with my rest. Anybody knows me. I don't play with my rest. <laughs> Anybody knows me. I work hard. But when I hit my bed, I sleep. And every now and then, I'm trying to get this man to be a little patient with me so I can go away for a long time. You know? <laughs> rest is a part of mine. Amen. Thank you, sir. Can I yes, just sir. digress a little bit on something you said yes. in the uh, judgment before when you talked about he raised Paul up and cleaned him up, washed him off, and renewed him and sent him right back to where he was persecuted and killed him. Yes, sir. You know what just came to me is that the difficulty that we think we have, well, I'll speak for myself, but in terms of family, you know, we all got those cookies and still in the family and those, you know, that those are those and those. And when you, when you try to reach out to them, it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very good people. Yeah, yeah. Share it again, please. I, I was just saying, back then, we were just talking about where uh, he came to, uh, to Paul and, and, and rose him up and cleaned him up and shipped him out again back into the same place where he was killed and persecuted. Yeah. Uh, and it just made me think of family. You know, I told me this for us to go back and we all got those cookies and nannies and those that are still on the street and doing what they do. And when you come back to visit or you're in their presence, you know, it's the most hard, it's a difficult thing to do. Because they see the old Bernie or the old whoever, you know, and they just can't, it, the ears are closed, hearts are closed. I can't imagine what this was, you know, to, to go back in a place of work. I haven't killed anybody in my house or persecuted anybody. But still, just that vision of what they have in their hearts and in their minds about what, what, what they know and what they don't know, really. Mm -hmm. uh, made me think of that much time that must be. Yes, that's correct. As a matter of fact, some of the hardest people is for you to win to the Lord is your family. Mm -hmm. Some of the hardest ones, and especially the ones that you surround with, especially in your family. And it kind of reminded me why a safe can't marry to an unsafe person. <laughs> Let me say it again. Let me say it again. If you're safe, you can't marry to someone who's unsafe. You save your world of trouble. Let me explain to you why. Why it's going to be a problem. Because if you are a safe person, and you should meet that unsafe person somewhere said you guys um, was out playing ball or something 
you see this 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 girl and you as I am using girl because I'm a man, you see a girl and you say you like her and you want to get married and you, you, you start talking to her. But she she go to church but she she has she has no clue of what the church is all about. But I just love her. Mm -hmm. Please understand. Please understand that because she can't see the same thing you see, your chances are you are running to a major problem with it. And as soon as you begin to grow in God, mean that you want to go to church, you want to go to Bible study, you want to hear the Bible, you get up early in the morning, you're talking to God. Watch out, persecution begins. Why you gotta make all that noise in the morning praying? Why you gotta play all them songs? Why don't you play some calypso so we can boogie it up? I mean, just a bunch of stuff. And the attack comes severely against those of us who are family members who are saved. Mm -hmm. I know. This is a, a family of ten. I was number one. I got saved first. The Lord got me. Boom! Picked me up. Saved me. And he saved me. My brothers. Oh, you only in church because you want a woman. Thank God I got money there. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy. Thank you, Jesus. But even sometimes some men marry women that are in the church, and some men marry men in the church, but they realize that, oh my God, that's a mess. A mess. I've seen it both ways. So yes, many, the severe persecution comes from our family members. It kind of reminded me of the words of Jesus Christ when the Bible says that Jesus could not perform many miracles. Right in Capernaum, when, when Capernaum was where Jesus lived. And the Jesus could not perform many miracles in Capernaum because simply because of unbelief. They, his own brothers, his own family, he said, We know him, man. He's Joseph's son. I mean, uh, who is he? What does he think he is? You know? So these, these people that Paul would receive the most persecution from is the one who knew him. The ones that authorized him to go and persecute the Christians. And no point saying, No, 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 I can't do it anymore. No, no, no. So they turn on him. So they put their turn on the eternal yes. And, and those of you, that have unsaved loved ones in the family that used to run with, they drink together with, party together with, and all that stuff. And they see you're not doing it now. The Bible says they think it's strange that you don't run the same rules like them anymore. You need to let them know the reason why you're not doing that anymore is because a great change has come over you. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not doing it anymore because you want to be religious. They may call you holy ruler, that's all right. But you're doing it because a change took place inside of you. Circumcision to society. Let me move on, please. <clears throat> the here the apostle is attempting to bring them to an understanding concerning this mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is that through the, uh, the gospel, reconciliation, through the gospel. I place in the word through the gospel there. I place some emphasis right there because I want you to see how powerful that gospel is. How powerful. That gospel is. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Powerful scripture. The gospel is the power of God. I want you guys to see how powerful the gospel is. The gospel is the only thing that can bring circumcision to a man's heart. To come in, come with a dead skin, and give you a new heart. The gospel is the gospel that bridges the gap between the Jews and the Gentiles. The power of this gospel. The reason why we are here tonight. It's because of the gospel. Amen. Preach I got up on Friday night. I went to a youth meeting. Because I went there because of a young lady. Got there. When I got there, I sat in the back. In the very last row in the back. I'm sitting there. And the youth missed her minutes ago. And she began to speak from Amos chapter 4 verse 12. I'm talking about many, many years ago. Never forget it to this day. Amos chapter 4 verse 12. Are you prepared to meet your God? I sat right back there. And she's, and are you prepared to meet your God? And she's ministering. Huh? In the midst of ministry, start crying. Then I went to see her right in the eyes. And I remember sitting in the back of the church saying, What is she crying about? Oh, she had this talk. Huh? Oh, you got that? What is she crying about? Then you realize that she was giving birth. She was giving birth to this horse. It's kind of the Lord um, uh, saved me that night. <laughs> Mankind can now have access to his creator through Christ. Also, reconciliation between the Jews and the Gentiles through the power of the gospel. He mentioned this in the previous chapter. He said, Now, but now in Christ Jesus, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, 
who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, excuse me, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away, and peace to you who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. This is so exciting to me. Because no longer do I need some Jew to go before God for me. But I can go before God anytime I want. I can talk to him anytime I want. While I'm driving, while I'm cleaning, I'm vacuuming, while I'm washing. I could be talking to my God. Mm -hmm. I, don't wait to, I don't need to wait until I come into a building mm -hmm. to talk to my God. When I, went to, when I was in Greece, when I was in, not Greece, when I was in Turkey, I remember when I was in Turkey, I told the guys, when I visited Turkey, I went up on this high mountain that the Roman Catholic Church, yes, the Roman Catholic Church, they built this tabernacle up there, this huge tabernacle. It's an exact re replica of what we got in the, in the Old Testament. And this tabernacle, they had the Holy of Holies and the Most Holy Place inside of it. And in there it was, and as I went into the tabernacle, I saw they had this huge, thick, black curtain struck, I mean, draped from the ceiling all the way to the floor. I looked at it and I said, oh, it's nice. I wonder what they got behind there. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm curious, man. I'm black, I guess, so I like to hear what's going on behind there. So I wonder what's behind there. So very much, I went up to the curtain and there was a monk sitting on one side. He sat there with a big Big stick in his hand, a big staff. He just sat there. When we were going in, I waved him. Good morning. He won't move. Just sat there like a dummy. As I tried to pull the curtain, he leaped from where he was right in front of me and slammed the rod in the floor. Bang! Wow. Not allowed. And I thought, Whoa. I thought that curtain was torn. Mm -hmm. That curtain was torn, not from the bottom up, but from the top coming down, giving access to anybody who wants to come in. And he says, you can't go in. So in your own Catholic church, they still believe that in order for you to come to God, you got to come in with them. Sorry if you believe in your own Catholic church style. So they have, and of course, you hear, you hear the preachers already with the long robe and all the stuff that they wear and all that stuff. And then, I mean, the stuff that you, and I believe that the Roman Catholic Church, um, forgive me, brothers and sisters, those of you that are viewing this table online, but I really believe that the Roman Catholic Church is responsible for many of the um, hypocrisy that we see in our world today. I firmly believe that, um, that the Roman Catholic Church um, could make a big difference in our world, but they chose to keep people in bondage by, by the stuff that they do. And, um, God help them. Amen. 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 Let's move on. Thank you, Lord. Verse 7. Paul says, I became a servant of this gospel, of the same gospel, by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Paul seems to change his tone right here. He says, in, in this, sorry, in, sorry, his tone in this method of approach, in his method of approach. Observe, he did not continue to address himself as a prisoner of Christ, as he did in verse 1. But now he called himself a servant of this gospel. Almost the same. The word servant is more in line with the word deacon. Deacon. A servant acting under and by the direction of the great master, Jesus Christ, from whom by a special call and revelation. So Paul has removed himself from being an apostle 
prisoner to now he says as a servant of Christ. Meaning that he has a master over him. I just wonder if I'm talking to you guys, if we see ourselves as a servant, if we will be in better shape in the way we live with one another. Uh, would, you, would you forgive me, baby? I'm going to put this down for a minute. Because I want to take a look at Philippians. Paul speaking there to the church in Philippi, in Philippians chapter 2. Uh, I want somebody to look at chapter 2. Let's read from verses 1 through verse, I think it's verse 12. Somebody can find Philippians chapter 2. And if you have the NIV, I prefer it's read from the NIV, please. Anybody has Philippians chapter 2? Uh, okay, thank you. Let's read it, please, together. Together. If therefore, if, there, if, if therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, let me ask you a question. Have you received any encouragement from being united with Christ? Yes. Thank you very much. Number two. If any comfort. Have you received any comfort from his love? Yes. yes. Nice. Go ahead and continue. If any common sharing. Have you received any common sharing from his spirit? Yes. yes. Continue. If any tenderness and for every single day, every single day, every single day, Jeremiah says every day, new mercies we see, every single day, because you experience it. Continue, please. Amen. And make my, Paul is speaking, make my joy complete by being, meaning do unto others as I've done unto you. That's what he's saying. If you receive this from the Father, if you receive these blessings, if you receive all of these benefits from God. He said, as I give to you, you do to others. The problem that we have, Pastor T.J., we want God to do for us. But he must stop right there. I do say I should not do it for others. You know, I, I wonder why the cross is like this. Some of us, all we want the cross to be is like this. I said, just you and God. Have you ever heard of us? I'm not accountable to anybody but God. God is my, no, no, I don't go to church because you see, God is it. I've even heard some sister says, God is my husband. I said, ah, ah. He's not your husband. God is not. The reason why there's a cross is because no man can live on this earth by himself. Mm -hmm. We need one another. Mm -hmm. And God has given us all of these so that we can live with each other down here. So the cross is vertical and horizontal. You see? So being like minded. And it says, having the same, watch it, having the same, what? Love. Having the same love. My God, what kind of love is this? What kind of love is this, Billy Murrow? That God will see me messed up today. Messed up tomorrow, messed up the next day, messed up, and every day he's just saying, I got mercies for you, son. Mm. Just come. Right. I can clean you up, fix you up again, mm. keep you moving. I can clean you up again. Come, 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 come. What kind of love is that? Mm. I, I want to pause, I want to, I want to pause right there because I really need to take you guys somewhere and time out for me. But can you just find first Corinthians chapter 13 and just read from verses 4. First Corinthians chapter 13. Everybody, let's move, let's move quickly time. Time is on us. First Corinthians chapter 13. Read from verse 4, please. I, I'm coming right back here. Don't change this on the screen, please. Leave this on the screen. I'm coming back there. I just want to see First Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4. Microphone, please. Microphone, somebody back here? Yes, somebody here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 12 from chapter 13 from verse 4. Love is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is kind. It does not envy. Wait, wait, wait. Please understand that what you're reading, that, that only works this way. That's not this way. That's this way. Love is patient. That's for this way. Love is kind. That's for this way. Continue, please. It does not envy. It does not envy. That has to do it this way. Yeah, go ahead. It does not boast. It does not boast. This way. Mm -hmm. It is not proud. It is not proud. This way, yes. Verse 5, it is not rude. It's not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not selfish. So that's what self yeah, Go ahead, please. It is not easily angered. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Oh. <laughs> I got to scratch my hair. 
I think we need to get back to the Bible. We forget those verses. Keeps no record of vows. But we have folks who likes to go back, dig it. There are folks in that church who like to go back there and say, you're always go back. Let's stop it, brothers and sisters. Listen, all this stuff that we're doing here, all this thing is to help us to become mature as we're going to get to our peace in a minute. All God is trying to get us to do is that we can become mature. You'll see it later on as we go down into this. Even in chapter 2, we spoke about it. Paul wants us to become so mature that the stuff that used to bother us, that we wouldn't be like the Gentiles anymore. See, the way that we Gentiles function, they function opposite to what you read tonight. An eye for an eye, you do me something, I get you back. You know? But that's not the way we function in this, in this kingdom. You see? So back here, he says, be like-minded, have the same love, be one in and in. Continue, please. Continue. Let's, let's look. Then he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, continue. Wow. Is that in the Bible? That's in the Bible. We look out for one another. This is the way that I do. That's the way that I do. That's what I do. So she said, you know, let me have somebody. Let me, let me have, I said to you guys, if you're going to buy a car, don't buy a two-seater. Buy a car that can carry somebody in case it's raining. You give somebody a ride. You can buy a house. Don't buy a one-bedroom house. Get a two-bedroom or a three-bedroom or something like that. So that means if somebody gets thrown out from the house one day or somebody's homeless, you can say, come sit by me tonight. When you go to buy some milk, don't just buy one gallon of milk. I'm teaching you guys that we need to demonstrate this love. He said, he's saying, not looking at your own interests. He's saying about coming out of our comfort zone. Let's step outside of this. Let's demonstrate the lifestyle of Christ. That's what he's saying. He says, each of you should look at the interests of others. I've got to seek the interests of my brothers and my sisters. Now, have you guys ever heard about a group called the Common Ground? There used to be um, somewhere... Common ground, the Dutchess things. They're no longer there. I mean, I, I do not come with them. Whatever they do, I know. But their, their concept of common ground is that everybody had everything. Nobody, nothing belonged to one person. Everything. I had problems with that. That means that if I had a pass, that pass is not only for me. If you could fit Jeff, that pass is shared between Jeff and me. I have problems with that. Yeah, nobody likes my pants. <laughs> but, but the concept, I believe they got the concept from Acts chapter 2. The Bible says that they own all things in common, you know. But let's continue, please. I need to move on. It says, in your relationships, in your relationships. He's speaking about right here. In your relationships. You know what he says? With one another. Have the same mindset. I'm done with that. All right. That's enough. That piece. Have the same mindset. Paul seemed to change his tone when he says, Observe, he did not continue to address himself as a prisoner of Christ, as he did in verse 1, but now he called himself a servant of the gospel, of course, referring to a deacon. Verse 8 Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me. This is saying, I didn't choose this. I, if you have up to me, I was going to choose this. He said, I didn't choose this. This grace was given to me. See, he's saying that to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. Can you just hear the other apostles? Who do you think you are? <laughs> I, I can just hear those other apostles who be with Jesus Christ. I mean, all the time. Where, where did you come from? Yeah. Talking about you got the answer to this mystery. What's this mystery you're talking about, man? I mean, 
that's been hidden. He said, that's been hidden for ages. It's been kept hidden for ages. Paul, where did you come from? I mean, picture, just picture it. I mean, in today's society, they will shut him down too. Of course. You got this new revelation. This new revelation. So you read something, and there are people today, there are preachers today, who are coming up with all kinds of crazy revelation. Paul says, if anyone, even an angel of heaven, preach another gospel than that which you receive, let him be what? A curse. A curse. Know what you believe. Paul is speaking to them about this mystery that for ages past was wrapped up inside of God. Nobody knew what that was. Um, I need to share with you, and I didn't get to the old man. He ref sorry. He even refused to address himself as an apostle, but saw himself as one who was not worthy to be even given that title. He knew how he persecuted God's people, believing he was doing God's will. He also testified in Acts chapter 22. He says, I am a Jew. See that as all. I was born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city. Brilliant man. I studied under Gamaliel and was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. I was just as zealous for God as any of you today. I persecuted the followers of the way, upper, upper W, upper case W, to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. As a high priest and all the council can themselves testify, I even obtained letters from them to their, as, as, uh, to their associates in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. So he was very passionate about what he was about. He was zealous. Paul, I mean, Saul so was saying, listen, you mentioned anything about Jesus Christ raising from death, man, you're looking for jail. Or perhaps your head alone. He was very passionate. And with the same passion, the same zeal, God just removed it. He just refocused him. So he didn't took away the zeal from him. What he did is change the direction. Now, you'll use that same passion and that zeal to declare my word. Let's move on, please. I get a few more minutes. And we 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 get to the basketball time. Uh, so address the offering no time because we finish at eight. Amen. Verse nine. To make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. You know, you know. There's there's something I want to say right here in Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Huh? I mean, if somebody got that, can you just read that, please? Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Right there. It talks about, and for ages past, this has been hidden up in God. Anybody? Can Deuteronomy chapter 29? Okay, it's on the screen. It says what? That secret things belong to God. But the things revealed belong to us. So, so if this is a mystery, Sister Sharon, now the Jews, remember the mystery really, is that the Jews and the Gentiles, that's a big mystery. The mystery is now the Jews who are God's chosen people is joining together with these bunch of Gentiles who had no business or no share in this. And for years it kept like that. And now the mystery is God is now bringing the two together and pull out of these two, this group that called the church. That called it a mystery. Never before in the history of the earth has that ever happened. First time. And Paul is saying, what Christ came to do, I am now unfolding to you people. That Christ didn't just come to just save the world, but he came to bring reconciliation between these two groups. He's bringing reconciliation between the Jews and the Gentiles. So now both have access to God. Both can just come to God any time and say, our Father. Not just the Jews could call God Father, but the Gentiles could call God Father. Woo! Woo! I love that. So Jews can't boast anymore and call themselves a favorite of God. But anyone, to him that received him, to them gave he power.
to become sons of God. So now, the Jews and the Gentiles has the same rights. Same rights to go before God anytime they want to receive from God the blessings that God promised to the Jews. Lord and Cooper, they were access to them. I can say, Lord, I thank you so much. I can dwell in your secret place. I can access from you that blessing that you promised to them. Because Jesus Christ, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Jesus Christ became a curse for me so that blessings of Abraham can come upon me. So I can claim them. So in the scripture says, Praise be to God and Father for our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. I know of access to those blessings. I can claim them today. Just begin to someone who called me all the way from the United States. I was going through a very difficult time. I was just ministering to them and talking to them and crying and going through this rough time. The seasons was just rough on them. And after sharing with them a little, I said, I want you to repeat this confession that I say to our church. And we were just saying, I'm still confident. And she, she began to speak it. And I said, no, 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 no. I want you to say that you mean it. Like it's real. Like you're confident. It's just like you're going to sit on a chair and say, oh, you are confident of this one thing. That you're going to see the goodness of God. Why not alive? You don't want to see me in death. <laughs> you want to see me in your life. So I got to talk. You confess your time. And when I'm through, I ask God, but that is so good. And that's what I'm talking about. Change your talk. Mm -hmm. If God say you're blessed, yes. say you're blessed. Mm -hmm. If God say you're healed, say you're healed. Yeah. Come on. Let's speak what God says that we are. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Master G, G, some of the stuff, I don't know who sang it to I'm no longer a slave to fear, you know, I am a child of God. Let me sing that song, man. let the song be a part of who we are. I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I sing those songs. When, we, when, they, when they, they lead us to sing those songs, I sing those songs with such passion because they are real to me. When you see me raise my hands there and study, sometimes, please know that when I raise my hand to, 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 to sing those songs, it's not because everything is in, in place the way I want it to be. It's because I am worshiping the one who gave me access to come before him. So I'm worshiping, I'm singing. My wife says, well, don't sing, please. I know not to sing, but I got to do something. Make wow. some noise. Boom, come, run, jump, grab like a pig. Whatever we're going to do. But we're going to worship our Jesus. Yeah. The mystery has been made, so we have access to this God. Yeah. Oh, it's the best news. It's the best news. Because once upon a time, we were without hope, we were without God in this world. We were foreigners to the covenant of Israel. Once upon a time. That's why Paul says, for this reason, he's referring to past chapter 2. For this reason, he's saying, I Paul became a prisoner. See, he's pointing back. Before, you see, we once were lost. We once were like people and foreigners in this world. But now, thank you, Jesus. But today, you say, we are saved by grace. Hallelujah. And I have access as the Jews. So, Pastor Cooper, yes. um, you hear people today call themselves apostles. Mm -hmm. So this is a two-part question. Yes, okay. What are the qualifications of an apostle? Okay. And are, is an apostle different than a disciple? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Apostle. Let's, 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 first of all, let's go to the scriptures. I'll just show you guys something. See, see this in the scriptures. Uh, chapter. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to next week. She's, she's asking me some questions for chapter 4, but I need to answer them for tonight. Verse 7. To each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why he says, When he ascended high, he led captives in this trade and gave gifts to men. And of course, speaking of the gifts, and he goes all the way down to 
So the PA was trying to prepare us to work some service later on also. But I speak about um, the ego also more, where he calls them to be apostles, and he gave the church apostles and pastors and teachers and uh, the mankind. It's right there in chapter 4. He gave gifts to that. Mm. I know it's in there. But he's speaking about they gave these gifts to the church. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's verse 11. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some teachers were trying to prepare God's people for service. So, all right. <clears throat> Difference between the apostle and you call it the disciple. Now, let me explain who is a disciple. A disciple is a follower of some. And if you say Christ's disciple, then I would say a disciple is a follower of Christ. That's, but you are a disciple of. Because you know, Jesus Christ says, there are times when the, the, the Jews, some of the Pharisees said to Jesus, you're not, you're not our disciple, you are, you, are, you are a disciple of Moses. We are, we are Moses' disciples. You know? mm -hmm. So you are disciples of, a disciple is a follower of, a follower of whoever, I mean, that, that person. But for Christians, for those of us who are Christians, we are disciples of Christ. So that's a disciple. We are a follower of Christ. An apostle is a follower of Christ too. So, a pastor is a follower of Christ. A teacher is a disciple. A, a apostle is a disciple. Everyone that fits in that category of those gifts, they are all followers of Christ. So, they are all called disciples. That's what that's really. An apostle, is, the word apostle means sent. S-E-N-T. Sent one. One was sent with a special message to the, to the churches. That's all that is. Uh, uh, you know, for years, I used to say, no, 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 Pastor is supposed to be um, a person who oversees a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. But as I did my studies, really meant a set one. I want to be a set with a special message. Um, um, there are some who call themselves Pastor. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I have a better to do with the Lord. <laughs> there are some people who call themselves Pastor. But there are some that God has called to be apostle. Mm -hmm. the, one that, the ones that God has called to be apostle, you will know that. The spirit of the universe, the your spirit, that this person is called by God with that word. But there are some of them call themselves apostle. All they want is a title. Mm -hmm. People like titles. People love it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I said to folks, listen, sister, sister Chad, I, I know of someone, I think I'm talking to you tonight, who called himself chief apostle. And when I saw it written, it is a document that was written. And when I saw it, I said, oh. that means this person is over Peter and all of them. <laughs> because when I hear chief apostle, it means that this person is higher than Peter. And all these apostles that Jesus Christ called. So many, how does someone become a chief apostle? I mean, they're here from God alone. I have problems. You're not preaching in my church. <laughs> you could be a chief apostle, not coming here. You mess my people up, and next thing you know, I got to come and try to clear that. No, no, no. <laughs> so people give themselves titles. Paul has a word in Philippians. I'm going to let you guys go. It's 8 o'clock. Philippians chapter 1. I want you guys to hear what Paul says. And one day, my daughter Debbie, who is here with us tonight, asked me this question. Paul says in chapter 1, verse 12, he says, Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has been clear, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard that everyone else, I'm sorry, and to everyone else, that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my change, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true, verse 15, it is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry. It is true that some preach Christ, of course, to die in the gospel, out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here in, these, uh, in defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up 
struggle for me while I'm in these chains. Mm -hmm. As a matter of course, that's the most important thing is that the gospel is being preached. So to Paul is saying, the most important thing is the gospel is being preached. There are some who are hypocrites who try to preach the gospel. And sometimes, as they preach the gospel, you will see later on, later on as we continue in our teachings, when Paul is warning us that we need to be, we need to be mature, not mere infants being tossed and turned by every wind of doctrine. Because, and that's in chapter 4, we get there at a certain time, where we speak about we need to be strong in the Lord. Because all kinds of wind of doctrine are out there today. Every kind, my God. I'm hearing some trash. And listen, forget some of the gospel songs. I know we like them because the music sounds good. When I begin to listen to the lyrics, I just press my off button. <laughs> Sorry, brothers and sisters, I got to guard my heart. I got to protect me. I don't want you to leave me. So I can do what I want then. Well, I'm saved, but I can live how I want. No, you can't. But these gospel artists, they are there for the big box. That's all they're singing for. <laughs> it's all the words that you hear that's put in the, in the lyrics that they put in the songs. They don't, they don't mean that. Let the Lord put them through all the, those tests and you're going to see. Just one of the other tests. They're singing all the nice songs. Put them through one test. They sing. That's why they're singing for the big money. But they don't have nothing behind it. None. So people give themselves those titles. And you can tell. I've been to churches where they call themselves a pastor and they get five, six people in there. And I'm wondering, I know, right now in this building here. A pastor. I've been in this church. A pastor chair out of here, one big chair over here, bigger than me. Bigger than me. Chief Bishop. I went there looking in the church, five people. And I said, but maybe I need to be a chief bishop. Yeah. Sandy Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My daughter Debbie is with us tonight. Amen. 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 So Debbie is with us tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. speaking to us tonight, oh God, your word. We thank you, Lord, that, um, that we've been fed, Father. I pray that as we continue to speak, that you continue to speak to us, open our eyes, open our ears, and um, speak to our hearts, oh God, that we may never depart from your presence, Lord. Pray, oh God, for travel and mercies for every individual that we go home tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.